Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Kage Kaze's Domain. Uh, it's been a little bit longer than I expected uh, to get back to this character, but I definitely wanted to finish it up for you guys. And I wanted to start with a couple things that I noticed that I was uh, slightly misinformed about and uh, was a bit wrong when I said on my videos. And one was uh, the ability to swap things around here on the hotbar. I had mentioned that you notice how I can swap things around very easily without incurring a cooldown. Well, part of this is because they finally tied in a feature into the game uh, as to where you no longer incur a cooldown as long as you are in town. So, for example, uh, another thing I didn't go over was the rune I got for Cleave. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my primary and I'm going to go to Cleave. And I'm going to go over here to Rupture. And I'll go over it when I'm about, when I'm uh, ready to use it. But I'm going to hit, hit accept, and as you can see, no cooldown was incurred by doing that. So it's only in town that you do not get the cooldown, and you can move things around. Uh, I tested it in the game world, uh, and it, when I pulled a slot off like this and moved it, or if I moved it like this and then let go, the cooldown would be incurred the moment I put it back in a slot. And then, of course, once I put that down, and I'll, I'll show you real quick to kind of go over that. Uh, so what I'll do here real quick is I'm just going to real qu fast uh, just recreate my build here. And uh, let's see what do I want to use. I still really like Ground Stomp. And it's a question of Leap or Spear. And I think I'm going to go ahead and take Spear back. And pound of flesh, just for health clubs. Okay, um, another thing uh, I'm going to go over here real quick is I, I really didn't look in depth here when I talked about um, the things you could craft here by the by the blacksmith. And what I've noticed because I, I had kind of heard that they had changed this a bit, and I wanted to check for myself, a lot of these have had the stat specific uh, changes or, or uh, sorry, stat specific um, properties removed. Um, for example, this Apprentice Lesser 1, notice it says plus 2 random magic properties. It used to give intelligence and a plus 1 random property. Now it's just 2 properties. Now this one, because it is a higher level, level 14, it does have intelligence and one, ra uh, one random pr uh, property on it. But the lower level wand does not. And uh, something else I've noticed is they've kind of changed that around with these other two... Two-handed weapons, because I was looking at two-handed weapons, how they compared, what two-handed weapons would you want to use? For example, the two-handed sword originally gave you strength. The two-handed axe usually gave you attack speed. It didn't give you the raw strength, but it gave you attack speed. It looks like they've shuffled that around as well. Here's the flamberge. Two random properties. The executioner's, executioner's sword excuse me, has vitality on it, so it doesn't actually have an attack stat on it, Vitality, though, is very nice for keeping yourself alive, so you get Vitality and two randoms. Uh, this Adept Maul, two randoms. Uh, Master Great Axe, two randoms. So as you can see, they've kind of taken away the expectation that uh, axes are going to be maybe for speed and for crit, and swords are going to be for raw strength, or things like that. They're, they've got more random properties, and of course, because we only have so much here, we only have level 4, almost level 5 to go on, we can't really assume what kind of th stats they're going to be giving these. Now, it looks like they decided to revert the changes for quivers. As you can see here, they in the last patch, patch 13, they added plus damage affixes to quivers. They've just taken them back off. But I am noticing, okay, this one comes with a dexterity boost, which is nice. Unfortunately, as you can see, you can't craft a quiver to use anymore. Um, but this one comes with dexterity, two random, and attack speed. This one comes with attack speed. I think what's going on here, and I haven't confirmed this, and I will look into it when I do the Demon Hunter again, is what I've heard is you cannot use quivers with one-handed crossbows anymore. You have to dual wield or be using an offhand like a shield. So maybe if you get a shield with plus the damage, you could do that. So... What they've done, it looks like, in lieu of giving you damage on the quiver, to because it was looking like having a quiver was going to be the only way to play. Um, unless you maybe put gems in your dual wielding. But it looks like what they've done, instead of giving you plus two attack, 
they're giving you attack speed increases. So now when you've got your two-handed crossbow, they fire so slow, well now you're going to have a way to compensate for that by having a quiver equipped. So we'll look into that a bit, and I, I kind of like that idea better, because adding plus to damage um, was starting to feel, even though I liked it at first, once I started actually using it, I could tell that it was trumping a lot. So, all right, uh, what we're going to do here real quick is we're going to go over Cleave, since I forgot to go over it when I got it. Uh, cleave, with its new Rupture Rune, enemies slain by Cleave explode, causing 85% weapon damage to all other enemies within 8 yards. Uh, this was buffed from before. It used to only have a chance to cause them to explode. Now they will always explode. Um, it's been changed a bit. It, originally, they exploded for 39% weapon damage, and it went up to 110%. And then in patch 14, they nerfed it down again from 110 down to 85. The good news, though, is that Cleave with Rupture is still more powerful than it was in the la um, in the last patch. Even though it's been nerfed from what they changed, it, it it's it's still better than its original value. Uh, and it has been nursed slightly. It used to do 13 yards. It's now 8 yards. So we'll take a look at that, see how it works out. I got to play around with it a tiny bit in one of my co-op playthroughs. Uh, see, there it is. There's the explosion. It can be very nice for tight-knit groups. And you've, you're already doing a, uh, a nice large arc there with, uh, with Cleave. And now enemies that you kill with it will also explode. Keep your distance from it. This burden is mine to bear. Just sending pieces of uh, pots flying here. See, I noticed this when I was using the Shatter Rune for the Wizard in Patch 13, when you do a Frost Nova and kill something and it had a 50% chance to do another Frost Nova. That was actually very powerful, because I was able to freeze a group of enemies, and then the next group of enemies, by the time they came in, I'd killed the first, and they had procced another Nova. Something like this, even though it's got a small, you know, 8-yard radius, can still be useful in a tight-knit group. There you go. Just shattering skeletons left and right. I better be careful though. Starting to take a bit of damage. Almost forgot about the increased damage. Kaboom! As you can see, nice groups being taken out by the explosion. Feels good. For the just. We have just arrived in Tristram, and I must say, I'm a bit dismayed. This place is a backwater filled with serfs and an ancient broken down monastery, hardly fit for the king of Condor. I cannot fathom why Lazarus was so intent on this becoming our new seat of power. There are 
forces are ready to us that are stronger than So it really is looking like I'm not going to hit level 11. Which is a shame. There's a lot more monsters out in the world. I was kind of surprised I didn't gain a level a little quicker with all my plus two experience gear. Of course, uh, I didn't get to wear a lot of that in the beginning, so it kind of evened out. More monsters, um, which means I, I killed more, but I didn't kill as many with as much experience gear. That makes a lot of sense. It should if you think like me. Think like me. Actually, don't do that. You'll find yourself in a very crazy place. Although they like me here. Oops, yeah. Pick up the health potions. Definitely pick up the health potions. Alright, uh, since I'm not worried about experience, what I actually want to do is I'm going to go back and see what I can make as a weapon. And just kind of feel that out, and let's see if I can get a good weapon for the Skeleton King. So I'm going to go up here to the can equip, because I'm only concerned with levels 1 to 10. And look at that! Just like that, levels 1 to 10. I can only make two items. Not really a lot. Um, so a lot of these have been spread out a lot further between the levels. Uh, which reminds me, one other thing that uh, uh, that was pointed out to me on the forums. Take note of what level you learn these passives. You go all the way up to 60 with these now. In the previous uh, patch, you earned everything at level 30. And I had linked a skill list that showed you what you would get at every level. You would basically get all of your active skills and all of your passives at level 30. After level 30, from 30 to 60, you would then be gaining nothing but runes. So I guess they decided they wanted to spread that out a bit more. It is kind of understandable. Um, I was really happy that they did that with the runes because it gave you something to look forward to from 30 to 60. Now you've got uh, passives that you can earn as you're going up to 60. So there's something other than runes to be looking forward to. Like, Because let's say the other runes you get you may not be interested in. Well, now there's passives that you might actually be interested in. Uh, what I haven't looked, though, is at the skills. And I'm just going to take a look and see the highest level skills. It looks like level 30 will still give us all our active skills. So the only thing you have to worry about from 30 to 60, it's not skills, it's just runes and passives. So they've mixed it up a little bit. So unfortunately it means you're not going to get the passives that you want right away, but at the same time it means you have more to unlock. After 30. Alright, so let's put the can equip. I can make some armor, but I, I'm more interested in weapons right now. And uh, please notice that this filter does change based on what tab you're in. In armor, it's can't equip right now. In weapons, it's all. Uh, that might trip you up in the future. So, broad axe, this is a 7.1 DPS, one handed weapon. Um, not too bad. Could dual wield with that. But this is a 16.0 two handed sword. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a couple of those. And it only takes subtle essences, so I'll just grab that. Thankfully, it only takes three, even though they increase the amounts of these that you'll need. Keep in mind, also, the filter does keep when you leave. You'll want to keep an eye on what your filters here uh, when you're crafting. Well, didn't I luck out? A plus nine strength and monsters grant four experience, so now I get more experience, <laughs> as well as getting my strength and a DPS increase. There we go. I do not need this axe anymore. It has been replaced 100%. Go ahead and... Uh, well, hold on, that's level 3. It's two-handed. I could use that with one of my... Uh, what was the one-handed item I have with experience? Plus 2. Plus 3. Eh. Just in case, because I can cast with my mighty wizardry muscles with a two-handed axe. 
Okay. So that's all I wanted to do there. I'm not going to take up too much time. I want to fight the king, and I'm sure you want to see the fight as well. So let's go in there. Uh, before I go into the king, though, I'm going back to clobber. That 20% chance to stun is uh, going to be invaluable against him, I believe. Actually, well, I have stomp. Yeah, okay, good. I have my stuns. Stun and bash, stun and ground stomp, so I'm hoping to keep him incapacitated. You will never defeat me! <laughs> you were defeated the moment you surrendered to madness. Oh, that's been modified. Uh, it used to be he would shout that line during the cutscene, or at least I used to cut, skip the cutscene, so maybe that could have affected it. Nice sword. I like that. All right, let's do this. Yeah, that ancient spear can be a nice attack, actually. 185. Not as much as hammer, of course, but not meant to be. All right, Skeleton King. Skeleton King versus Barbarian. Round one. Fight! Ow! Okay, I can hit him with it, but it didn't pull him in. There's my bash done. Let's hit him with that. Okay, I definitely can't pull him in. Okay, yeah, if I stay in that, that could hurt. Cormac's healing me, though. I'm stunning him enough that it's not really a big deal. An explosion of gold is mine. <laughs> uh, okay. Alright, look at this. Look at this gold. Everywhere. Okay, picking up. Pick it up. Alright, well, honestly, that was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Uh, and here's my thoughts on that. I think that this might have to be reevaluated. The 20% knockback is not a big deal on Bash because fast monsters can get back into monsters like the Skeleton King um, can uh, basically be immune to that. This stun, I think they need to work on a, dam on a diminishing return on stuns because there was a video out there you may have seen um, where four demon hunters went through with the impale rune that did 100% stun for two seconds, and they just hit him every time, five times, and the next one would do the same thing, and they stun locked him for the entire fight. They've reduced that by making the impale rune only be, like, I think a 65% chance to, uh, to stun him. Um, so you can't, with 100% success, do it. But that makes sense because Impale is a, is a hatred spender, whereas Bash is a fury generator. This is an ability meant to give me my resources to fight. A 20% stun chance. That's one in every five swings, basically. And as you saw, I stunned him just enough. You saw with Menglemaw, I stunned him enough that even though I was getting hit and I got maybe down to half health, that monster was still kind of incapacitated most of the fight. So my thoughts on that, and I hate to say it, is I would I think that maybe they might have to reevaluate the uh, percentage chance of stun uh, on this, 
or leave it the same. Honestly, I would love to see it the same because on normal monsters, it's a great proc chance. It doesn't always happen. But maybe on mini bosses and bosses, consider a diminishing return. Now this, keep in mind, Skeleton King is not the act boss. He's not act one's final boss. He's only a sub boss. So it could be maybe that's intended. Maybe the Skeleton King is not meant to be that badass, as it were. So, but, you know, time will tell. Either they'll change it, or we'll see with actual bosses what we're expected to be fighting here. Um, now, what I've got here, it looks like I got my first mighty weapon. And this, I think, is another change. We, uh, we've been talking on the forums about where certain items drop. They've really changed it. Not only the rings and the amulet, which they documented, but people are saying that they haven't seen tribal masks drop. And now that I think about it, I haven't either. Tribal masks, mighty belts that only the barbarians can wear, class-specific gear is not dropping like it used to. I think it's something that they want to start dropping later. The class-specific gear will probably have some affixes or something on it that... or properties on them that will be more valuable for later, higher-level characters instead of this 1 to 13. Um... This is the first mighty weapon I've seen, and as you saw from uh, the blacksmith here, I'm going to turn off the can equip. Uh, I don't even think he has mighty weapons at this point. Let's uh, turn that on. We're going to look very quickly. Crossbow, dagger, diebow, fist, hand, mace. There it is. Okay, there is one, and it is level 18, which is about close to where it was before. Although, look at that. Look at the strength on that. I don't know if that was strength before, and if it was, I don't know if it was that high. So, um, there you have it. This is the first mighty weapon I've gotten. And as you can see, it has barbarian-specific stats on it. This one is maximum fury and a hit adds to life. 11 damage, not bad. And I got myself an orb and a magic belt with experience on it, actually. That's helpful because I lost my experience belt because rare belts can't be worn this early, as you saw in one of my other videos. All right. Uh, let me go ahead and identify this, because some of you are probably waiting for that. High Passage. New sound on the uh, identify as well. Very close to uh, the town portal. 7% uh, extra gold. 6% chance of finding magical items. Plus 1 experience on monster kill. And health globes grant 2 life. Mm, yeah, not bad. Obviously, the one I had here that I had found before this patch is a little better. Don't expect that to always be the case, though, because, honestly, a lot of the gear I found prior to this patch is probably a little bit overpowered compared to this patch, um, which is part of the reason why I'm only using experience gear and trying not to use very high-end gear. I don't want to get that false sense of uh, being powerful when it could be I'm just using gear that's um, higher than what I should have had. So that's not bad. I will go ahead and be using that for this character and put the experience helm I have on another character. Hold on, did that change color? Oh, look at that. Hold on. I'm going to look at the helmet real quick. Notice how it's all one color. This one has kind of a blue stripe on it. That's nice. And I will put that in as well. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, this merchant's still here. Uh, I wanted to check on this because I want the one thing I had noticed in the last patch is this guy, this merchant, the miner, left this position when I killed the skeleton king before, and he wasn't up there. I had to kind of go around. So before I end this for you guys, I'm just going to make sure, see if we have any more journals. And it looks like we do have one. No, nothing there. And uh, I did find out that this book here, The History of New Tristram, is unique to this patch. People had not seen it prior to patch 14. So we'll have to look out for any lore that comes our way on that. Okay. I'm not finding anything, so what I'm going to do is just kind of give my opinions of the new patch here, kind of as a general overall and of the Barbarian. Barbarian feels very solid. I like some of the abilities here. Obviously they polished up the order that we get things. Um, getting ground stomp a little later is all right. Uh, getting ancient spear, I like that. Um, it's kind of a fun little ability to play with at the beginning. Um, a little curious about the decision to only give us two fury spenders at the beginning here. 
um, just because it, does, it doesn't create very diverse builds in the beginning. I mean, you're obviously going to pick one, either Bash or Cleave, although I technically could have both, but, you know, for a m well-rounded build, you're just going to have one or the other. So there's a decent selection there, single target or AoE. Um, here, I mean, between Rend and Hammer, both are very nice. Both have decent AoE capabilities. Um, just... And here's Weapon Throw. We're not going to get that in the beta anymore. They kind of moved that off on us. And, of course, Threatening Shout. It still it feels good, though, honestly. I mean, there's... I'm always attacking with my, my generators. I've got a nice hard hitter when I need it. Uh, there's nice control in the form of stuns and, you know, ground stomp, spear. I can move monsters around how I like. Uh, the rune order being changed works. Having clobber is honestly very nice for the more the additional damage that we're taking now the patch feels very polished i would t say that this honestly is the best release candidate i have seen in the beta that includes footage i've seen from earlier builds uh everything i've read about before and the, the little bit i've been able to play when i started joining in at patch uh 10 or so um Feels really good. Love the fact that there's more mobs. The maps do not feel as barren. I really didn't even think about that until I saw how many mobs there were in this patch. I, my impression of this patch is very favorable. I like it. I like the, the fact that they're just cleaning things up. The blacksmith it looks good because honestly there was a ton of gear you could make with crafting. And it just kind of trivialized everything. I mean, when I could make stuff that the Skeleton King can't drop anything better than, it makes you wonder, you know? I mean, granted, I know that the gear he makes is supposed to carry me for all of normal 1 to 30, but there were so many items I could craft between 1 and 13 that it just made everything ridiculous. So I like that change. Um, and it also opens up the possibility for more uh, crafted gear. Uh, I, I apologize. What I mean by that is uh, opens up the pop possibility of finding recipes, for example. I mean, maybe there is some really good low-level gear, but you have to find the recipe now. And then you can use that for one of your low bees, you know? So th maybe you'll want to farm with a primary character before making an alt, you know? Some people like to level alts all at the same time, but some like to do one for a while and then move on to the next. That'll give you something to find and something to uh, kind of open up the door for other characters. Uh... But again, it looks good. It feels good. I love the additional damage. There were a couple times I came close to death. Didn't feel it on the Skeleton King, but I already gave you my thoughts on that. I think there's some things they could do to make that feel better. But honestly, the packs and everything that I was fighting feel real good. So, all right, I've rambled on enough about how much I love this patch. Uh, yada, yada. I'm, okay, call him, I'm a fanboy, whatever. <laughs> uh, no, Honestly, I think they've done a really good job. I think they're really close, and I honestly think we're just counting down the days possibly counting down the hours at this point until we hear a release date guys um, hopefully you've enjoyed this uh, again as I always say thumb it up if you like it and leave comments suggestions questions or whatever in the comments and I'll read them and if I can respond and you know if it's a good enough question maybe I'll even make a video on it like I've done before so alright guys this is Kagekaze signing off thanks for watching